I'm your host, Zombs85, and this is CI64. And we're going to present to you five random trivial facts. I'm going to have him comment on Alright, so here's our first trivia. Buffalo, 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 Buffalo is a grammatically correct sentence. Your thoughts? What has happened to the English language? Good question. Now, how is this possible? Well, let's find out. How is this possible? Let's find out. First, we need to know the definition of the word buffalo. Buffalo can be a noun, commonly referring to the American bison. It can also refer to a city named Buffalo, such as Buffalo, New York. Buffalo can be an adjective. For example, Buffalo Man meaning a man from the city of Buffalo. The word buffalo is also a verb. This meaning isn't commonly used in the English language, but as a verb it means to bully, confuse, deceive, or intimidate. Because of this, buffalo 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 means bison from Buffalo, New York, who are intimidated by other bison in their community, also happen to intimidate bison in their community. Thus, Buffalo, 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 buffalo is a grammatically correct. All right. What do you think? This kind of explains why why I do bad in English class all the time. Yes. As a matter of fact, this trivia was invented by a college professor at guess where? New York. Nope. University of Buffalo. Okay. All right. Here's. Our next review. On average, two people per year are killed by vending machine. Your thoughts? I gotta be careful next time when I go to a vending machine. As long as you don't shake it. According to Spike TV's Mansers, the reason why two people per year die by a vending machine is because what happens is they put a coin in the vending machine and then say it eats it. So they get pissed off and start hitting it or shaking it. And then it tips over. And according to Mansers, it only needs to tip over 20%. And then it falls on top of you. So as long as you don't get pissed off and start kicking or punching or shaking the vending machine, you're fine. Any other thoughts? Call the operator vending machine before you start going all brutality on it. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Don't go, go, don't go brutal on a vending machine unless the operator guy messes up, too. I still have no idea what it means. Yeah. Um, let's just skip that. Let's go. The full name of Bangkok, the capital of Thailand, is really long. Yes, it's really long. You want to find out how long? Yes, but I just hope my brain doesn't go boom. Oh, well, let's see. Is this true? Here's a recording I obtained from Wikipedia. กรุงเทพมหานครอมรรัตนโกสินทร์มหินทรายุทธยามหาดิลกพบนพรัตราชธานีบุรีรมอุดมราชนิเวศมหาสถานอมรพิมานอวตารสถิตสกทัตติยวิษณุกรรมประสิทธิ์ This roughly translates into the city of angels, the great city, the eternal jewel city, the impregnable city of God Indra, the grand capital of the world endowed with nine precious gems, the happy city, abounding in an enormous royal palace that resembles the heavenly apple where reigns the reincarnated God, a city given by Indra and built by Vishnukarma. Your thoughts? And yes, that is the official name of Bangkok, well, ceremonial name. More like a city description than a name. I'm pretty sure a number of our viewers thought that. Yeah. Here's our next review. In Pocatello, Idaho, it's illegal 
to not smile. Yes, in Pocatello it's illegal to not smile. Dictatorship! Nah. No, I'm pretty sure this law isn't enforced. Yeah. But here's an explanation! According to Pocatello.us, homepage of the city of Pocatello, in 1948, the mayor of the city of Pocatello, George Phillips, passed an ordinance making it illegal not to smile in Pocatello. Your thoughts? I can't believe this law actually went through. Well, apparently, during that period of time, the city of Pocatello, well, let's just say... Things weren't going well, and the people weren't happy, and they needed to brighten things up a bit. I see. Well, that, kind of, that kind of explains it. Okay, here's our next trivia. The first can opener was invented 48 years after the can. Yes, the first can opener was invented 48 years after the can. You want to know? You want to see the proof? Yep. According to About.com, the first can was made in 1810, and the first can opener was made in 1858. The can opener indeed was invented 48 years after the can. What do you think? Pretty stupid. And as a matter of fact, until the can opener was invented, according to a TV show called The Fountain of Trivia, or Toribiano Izumi, in America, it aired as, Hey, Spring is Trivia. Some of you might have seen it. It was on Spike TV. According to that show, until they actually invented the can opener, in order to open a can, they did things like hit the can with a rock until it opened, or shoot it with a gun. Yes, shoot it with a gun. Not really the smartest way. Rather go with the rock idea. Well, I think a lot of our viewers will agree with you. Again, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure in that episode of Trivia, they proved that you can open a can with a gun, but you can't really eat it after that. Yep. Okay. So, out of the five trivia we introduced to the viewers we have today, which one do you think was the most interesting? I'll probably say... The can opener one. I mean, the invent. I mean, the invention pattern. Come on, should they invent both of them at once? Not necessarily. They were invented by two different people. But you think that the same person would invent a method to open a can? Exactly what I mean. Well, the can opener was invented 48 years after the can. This piece of trivia is today's number one trivia. Tune in in two weeks and we will present to you another five random trivial facts. See you next time! Sayonara.